When you have builder data collections, it's frequent that you're going to want to display it on your pages. The most common way you're going to do this is with data binding. Let's jump into our app homepage here to show you what we mean. Let's select this page here, which is our list of tasks. And what we see here is this specific element called a repeating list is purple. Anytime you have anything bound to a specific data point, it's going to appear purple inside of the element tree so that you're quickly able to know what's bound to data on the page. So what is actually bound here? Let's go over to our data tab when we have the repeating list element selected, and we're going to see two opportunities here. We're going to see our record value. So this is usually setting a specific value in a record, or we're going to see a collection list. In a repeating list, you're showing multiple records from a data collection, so you want to use the collection list data binding. So you can tell here I've chosen tasks because that's the data I want to set into this element. The next options that you have on this page include narrowing down your data to specific fields that you want. I could choose a specific field or set of fields if I wanted to, or I can just go ahead and choose get all fields. But let's talk about what we mean by used field names and why it's defaulting to false. If we go over to our tasks collection and I look at my task field, the field name is task. Underneath it, it has a field ID tied to it. This is the actual label for the data that we use whenever we move the data from the servers to the browser. And that's because sometimes you may decide to rename a field. And if you renamed a field, but all of your logic that you'd previously built was using the field name, it would break and you would have to rebuild it. So by always referencing the ID, you never have to worry about that. But now let's go to filters. Filtering is an important principle that you'll use inside of your actions, inside of data binding, as we show here. It's how you make sure the right data shows up as opposed to the wrong data. So right here, I want to filter the tasks that come in by the ID of the current user that's logged in. So if I had a whole application where many people were using my application to manage their to-do list, I only want to show them the data that's appropriate for them. And so I'm going to filter this by the user that created the task and they have to be logged in for me to get their ID. We'll go over data security in another video, but there's an additional thing that we'll do on top of your data collections that will actually entirely gate data that isn't accessible to other users. So even if you forgot to use this filter on this data and we requested tasks, it would still only go get the tasks assigned to the specific user that is appropriate for it. Next, let's go to sorting. Sorting, as you might expect, is simply a sort of values. When we say ascending, we start with numbers and go from zero all the way up and then go from A to Z alphabetically. When we do descending, it's the opposite. It will go from Z to A and then higher numbers down to lower numbers. Finally, you'll also have in this setting an opportunity to choose a certain number of records to return. Let's say you wanted a preview of tasks in another screen. So we don't want them to see all of their tasks. We want them to maybe click into that preview to then see the entire list. If I wanted that preview on a different page that never had all the data there, I might limit it to say three, but they're not going to get all of the tasks in that view. And finally, we have this use cache toggle on, which we typically toggle on to true. Builder makes data movement as efficient as possible for you. Instead of saying every time I want to go get data, I'm going to request it from the server to come here. If I know the data is already there on that local client's computer, I want to just get the data from there because that experience saves me half a second or a full second of time because the data is already there on the browser. So inside of Builder, we will automatically try to go and get data from a cache that's local before we go to a server because that experience is better on the user in the end. So we've set a data collection into a repeating list here. Now let's go into an example where we're setting specific records into a page that we actually see. 
And to do this, I'm gonna jump into our child page of the repeating list, the list row page right here. This will show up one time for every task that we have in our list. And you'll see again, we've got two things on this page bound to data. We have a name and we have notes about the task. If I click into name and I go over to data, I see we're using our record value to give its value from field, from tasks, and we're gonna give it the task value. Now, an important concept inside of Builder is the idea of current record field value. The most common way that you're gonna have a current record set is inside of a repeating list in Builder. When we say current record field value, what we actually mean in this case is we got all of the data for our tasks in this repeating list row here, but on this page, we have one record. We have one task that's set. And so that task specifically is our current record field value whenever we reference it on this page. But even as we duplicate this task many times on a page, every single individual task gets to work with its own current record field values, allowing us to manipulate data and display data correctly for every single task. So when I get the value from the data collection tasks, it knows what task I've given it and sets it into the page. So this was done twice for us where I also bound the notes field from the task collection to the notes section of the task. An additional thing that happens when we do this data binding and we're in a task row of a repeating list element is it's also setting variables for every single value that data record had into this current row page right here. If we use some of those specific values to customize the display of each individual task on the page. And we do that associated with the page load action. So let's go over the actions that happen when this page loads up so that you understand two things in particular. We're gonna go to page load. We're gonna go to page binding, which is nested under page load. The first action that you see here is data run bindings. Our page binding flow is actually conducting all of the code and the logic that's setting the value that you gave it into that particular element and displaying it. Right after page bindings, you'll see our condition where we're gonna check the status of the task to customize the view of it. You'll see our first step here is we're setting a variable status name and we're using our task statuses collection to go get this variable. There's a few unique things here that are really important. First, we've narrowed the field that we're requesting down to just the name. So we're only gonna get the name. Next, we're using the current record field value from the task collection, from the status ID field inside of the task collection, which is our data relationship field, allowing us to filter down to one specific status. By giving it a data format of comma separated, we know that we're just gonna get one specific value, so there'll be no commas. We're just gonna get the value of the status name. Well, let's show you that in the data collection itself. We're gonna go to tasks. We're gonna see that we have a status ID field here that we're pulling from, and it's got a list of the IDs of the statuses that we're wanting to connect this to. Now let's go to the status, task statuses collection. We're filtering by the ID that was in that task and we're going to target and ask for this value right here. And because we're narrowing it to one ID, we know we're just gonna get one name back. You will frequently use this way of getting data or using data for logic inside of your application. Now that we've set the variable status name from the task statuses data collection based off of its relationship to the current task that we see on this page, let's check to see the value of that variable to conduct some logic. In this case, we've just given it open and completed as the two potential values that it could have. And based off of the value of the variable that comes in, whether it is open or whether it is completed, I'm gonna go ahead and conduct one of two actions. I'm either gonna say set state incomplete or set state complete. These actions are going to update a couple items on the page. First, we're going to set if the checkbox should be checked with this element set attribute here. And then next, we're going to add a style class. If it's completed, we're going to make sure it's very clear that it's completed to that user on the front end. So let's load this up so we can see 
the data that we've set from the data collection here, and then we can see the individual record set to the app page and how we're using the relationship with the task status collection to conduct logic to then update the display on the front end. I'm gonna go ahead and load up my app page. You'll see on the page, the task names are populating as we design because of the data binding. You'll see the notes from the task also being data bound when they exist. And you are also seeing the state set from the status name. So if the task is completed, we're adding the check mark. We're crossing out the text and we're shadowing it so it doesn't show up as bold.